The, the corporate press are not exactly uh, changing. In fact, perhaps you could even make a case for them getting worse. So as, as I have titled it, the corporate press are still awful. And as we were talking about the Rittenhouse trial, I wanted to look at some of the yes. stuff going on there. So there are some this particularly first... bad examples. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there's this article from uh, Vanity Fair, which is just awful. So this is uh, the, the title for a start. Just Seems before... to have been written by a teenage girl. Yeah, but this is actually written by a grown woman. Um, I, I know it's difficult to think, but the Carl Rittenhouse judge is the actual worst. I mean, let's be honest, in democratic circles, is there much of a difference between teenage girls and grown women? Apparently At least not. in behaviour and attitudes. So anyway, the, the article starts off by saying, Last April, America, or at least a part of it, breathed a heavy sigh of relief when former police officer Derek Chauvin was actually held accountable for murdering George Floyd. Obviously, people weren't holding their breath because it was unclear whether or not Chauvin was actually responsible for Floyd's death. To anyone who watched the video of him kneeling on Floyd's neck, it was beyond clear he was. But because, as a country, we're so used to white people, particularly cops, being allowed to kill black people with impunity. So nice what, and what balanced this, journalism here. What does this have to do with Rittenhouse? Rittenhouse isn't a cop. None of the people that he shot were black. Well, apparently that's relevant. Okay. And it, it needs to Definitely be mentioned just... that apparently white people can just kill black people with impunity, according to Vanity Fair and their I'm, journalists. If Rittenhouse shows anything, white people can't even kill white people with impunity. Oh it's, it's so ridiculous, White isn't people it? can't even kill paedophiles with impunity, sadly. <laughs> Um, for starters, um, she says, um, even before the trial began, Schroeder refused to allow prosecutors to refer to uh, the people Rittenhouse killed as victims, claiming it was a loaded, um, too loaded a term. Well, yeah, I mean, as somebody with knowledge of this, uh, the reason for doing so was because, you know, a claim of self-defense means that if it's self-defense, Rittenhouse was the potential victim. So if it wasn't self-defense, then we can confirm that these people he shot were victims. Absolutely, Pretty clear yeah. cut. So um, she then quotes someone else, which is kind of a, a sleight of hand move. Um, because of course, I've been working here for now uh, a year and I can oh, well pick done. out this, uh, oh, well, it's almost a year, in eight days time it will Ooh. be. Um, but as I've been writing so many articles myself, I can tell that when someone uh, quotes someone else in an article like this, they're doing so because they're trying to say something that they want to be able to get away with, but through quoting someone else, it's, a, 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 it's a, like a, a, an appeal to authority. Yeah. So, authority. They quote the National Justice Correspondent Ellie Mistel, and she says, "I call Schroeder biased because the same, um, at the same conference at which he decided to prohibit the prosecution from using the word victims to describe people Rittenhouse shot, he said he would allow the defence to use words like rioters, looters, and arsonists to describe those same people." So, well, I mean, the footage shows they? them rioting. The footage shows them looting, and the footage shows them committing arson. I'm pretty sure Rosenbaum himself is explicit, was explicitly committing arson, and also was running around shouting the N-word at BLM protesters and asking mm -hmm. for people to shoot him. So Absolutely. Um, and then the quote says, that's uh, BS, that's not what she says, but she says the full word, but the ahem victims are not on trial. Rittenhouse is refusing to allow prosecutors to use the linguistically accurate terms for people who did not voluntarily attempt to catch a bullet with their face at the same time as allowing the defence to use prejudicial language to characterise what those people were doing at the time is the very definition of bias. I mean, honestly, if you listen to Joseph Rosenbaum, it sounds like he was voluntarily trying to catch a bullet in the face. Well, yeah, wasn't he saying, shoot me? Yeah, he was shouting, shoot me N-word at BLM rioters to try and antagonise them, uh, presumably either to start even more of a riot or because he'd just got out of hospital for suicidal uh, suicide attempts um, <laughs> just so that he could get mm -hmm. himself killed. So they go on to claim that, in fact, the judge had... Uh, a God Bless the USA ringtone, which was used at Trump rallies, and this is somehow um, grounds for it being a mistrial because An American he's politically biased. A patriotic American, biased, right-winger, oh, evil. Oh, dear. Good so, God. there's also been some other stuff. So, CBS claimed um, that this is an, an image, before they retracted it, that um, before the actual resolution mm. of the trial, uh, Kyle murdered two men, and then they later corrected the same story if we move on to the next one. Um, breaking down in tears, he told the jury he killed two men. 
So they, they yes. clearly, after realising that they got after, backlash, changed the tone. After realising that the entire trial is to determine if he murdered them or not, uh, that would be quite mm -hmm. a glaring distinction to make. Absolutely. And um, then we move on to this next thing. This isn't necessarily a journalist, but a, an author. But you, you found this one. Yes. And if uh, He says, Ahmed... Arbery was murdered. Carl Rittenhouse is a murderer. Decent white, pe white people can admit that. Okay. Okay. All right. That's coming from someone who has a book called If God is Love, Don't Be a Jerk. I mean, maybe you can take his own advice right well, there. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean what... what's the, the entire point of the trial is to find out who is innocent and who is yeah. guilty. I mean, if only terrible white people uh, can see that Kyle Rittenhouse didn't murder anybody and only shot people in self-defense, well, I guess I guess we're scum of the earth. Apparently so. Well, moving on to uh, CNN making a massive issue over a joke the judge made. So uh, the judge in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial makes inappropriate Asian food joke, and all he says is, I hope the Asian food... Um, that isn't coming isn't one of those boats uh, from Long Beach Harbour because I think there was some kind of hold up. So, oh, okay. So he's just making a joke about current events, things being held up. But obviously it was just a joke and CNN wrote an entire article <laughs> trying to dismiss they... the judge as w being racist. Was it CNN or MSNBC whose coverage of the riots was the fa now famous uh, fiery but mostly peaceful? Yes. Yes, I mean, CNN bastions of good journalism. I've made this point earlier, but if CNN was around during the 1910s and 1920s, we would have had such beautiful articles as fatal but mostly peaceful lynching. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one um, is the media covering for Joe Biden, saying no, Joe Biden did not refer to Satchel Page as um, not sure if I can say that on YouTube, but yeah, the, let's avoid the more. That one the more archaic version of the N-word um, during Veterans Day speech. So they're basically deflecting for him, even though it's on video. Yeah. Saying that it's, he did. It's very clear if you listen to it. So um, here is a Washington Post uh, columnist, uh, Gene Weingarten, saying, um, at what point at which the unvaccinated need to be prosecuted? So if you, if you don't have a vaccine you should be prosecuted. We, uh, we don't need prosecuting, because as, yeah. as, as far as I'm aware, we've not done anything wrong, have well, we? I mean, according to them, we have. Um, well, but no, yeah. this, this goes to show that the extremity of the people that are in the so-called accepted circles of the, the, the corporate yes. press, these, these people are just out to stir up trouble, it seems. Yeah, these are the sorts of things that anybody on the opposite end of the political aisle would never be able to get away with in a million years. Absolutely. So there's this uh, gem by Vice. Um, I mean, openly leftist at this point. So yep. one of Europe's most notorious far-right hate fests gets official backing. And this is, what is this official hate fest? Um, so Poland is celebrating their independence um, <laughs> day. And apparently this is this is a far right hate fest. Do you know who else were nationalists? Who? The SNP. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. when are you going to write that article, Vice? Yeah, I'd, come I'd on, like Vice. to see it. Um, so, just uh, reading from Wikipedia, just so I don't get any anything wrong about Poland's National Independence Day, they celebrate it on the 11th of November, which was yesterday, to commemorate the anniversary of the restoration of Poland's sovereignty as the Second Polish Republic in 1918 from the German, Austro-Hungarian and Russian empires. Following the partitions in the late 18th century, Poland ceased to exist for 123 years until the end of World War I. When the destruction from the neighbouring powers allowed the country to re-emerge it, it, um, and they have a, a non-working holiday to celebrate the existence of their yeah. entire country. Sounds like something worth celebrating if you're from Poland. Yeah. And so, if, uh, being, uh, if you are a Polish person, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to celebrate your national identity. Somehow. Exactly. So, sure, there was probably some extremists there. I mean, all in all, it's a massive national holiday. Do we really want to start pointing out rallies and other such things that have yeah, extremists show up to them? Pot calling the kettle black yes. a little bit. So this is uh, something that's uh, very interesting because actually uh, Carl and Callum, I don't know whether John was there as well, um, but they, they actually were at um, the Polish Independence Day march in 2019 and 
the, the so-called extremists at this Independence Day march are highlighted here on, on the screen. Wow. Um, that is the, the small number of mass. extremists, which are, I believe, they're the, the Polish uh, fascists. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a shame that there are Polish fascists, but, you know, in the vast sums of the crowds, I mean, that's only a small portion of the crowd. Like, that's, I mean, and even the crowd that's on screen, the actual larger yes. event, um, that that's not even and are, most of it. There's hundreds of thousands of people there on the streets yeah, of Warsaw, and then there's this. Outnumbered. There's about I don't know twenty, thirty people there. The I'd, extremists. I'd say thirty at tops. Let's be perfectly honest. So it, it's making a mountain out of a molehill a little bit. Sure, they're there. Big surprise. Sure, it's not not ideal that they are, but also it's a national holiday in Poland, and characterising it as some kind of far right extremist event is just trying to raise alarmism. It's the the kind of thing that um, makes. Uh, left-wingers say, okay, well, there's a rise of um, the far right and things like that when, in reality, the Overton window is only shifting further leftward. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's how centrists suddenly end up being far right, for instance. It, well, yeah, it, it's just ridiculous, and it's, it's an obvious political tactic to do this because no one who actually covered this would say, okay, yeah, this is like a, a far right event because it's just people waving the Polish flag, yeah. celebrating the existence of their nation. Well, I mean, and I mean, given the history of Poland as well and what the, the people have suffered, I think they have a right to celebrate the fact that they are no longer subject to uh, the tyranny of other countries, although they still are members of the European Union, which I know they're mm, busting heads ironic. with at the minute. Yes, I mean, I, I think this year's one, they did, didn't they have some people wandering around with flags saying F Joe Biden on it? They did which indeed. Just, just great memes, if you ask me. I mean, it, it must have sparked the ire of some Vice News journo. Oh, yeah. If you can even call them a journalist. Well, I mean, maybe. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, they're just activists in sheep's clothing, right? I mean, they're not even trying to hide it at mm -hmm. this point, so... But the uh, piece de resistance <laughs> is this article, which um, is on Forbes. Um, Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. Is this an article? Is this, this just reads like propaganda, just well, on the face of it from that title? It's written by the World Economic Forum. So, yes, it's propaganda. So, yes. It, this is like the biggest red flag. This You can probably yes. see this red flag from space. If Davros is behind anything, just back mm -hmm. away slowly. If anyone's seen that picture of Klaus Schwab where he's wearing that robe that makes him look like a, <laughs> looks a like Sith a... from Star Wars. <laughs> like, he, he looks like the typical evil genius behind I mean, he, everything. He, he is Dr. Evil. And he's coming for your private property. Like, mm -hmm. you all own nothing. And so, the bugs. Yes, and, and the bugs, of course. And you'll... Just, just wait until you hear this. Like the, all of this World Economic Forum stuff is seems tame in comparison to what they're putting forward in this article. All right. So this this supposed utopia they're describing sounds like my idea of a dystopia. This is like worse than 1984. I mean, so, these people always get the two mixed up. So, so it starts. Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say, our city. <laughs> All right, commie. <laughs> that's just the, that's just the commie meme when people online are like, "Oh, sorry, this is an hour. This is my sandwich. This is our sandwich," and they play the Soviet <laughs> national anthem behind it. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. <laughs> is it a nudist commune? But, uh, I, I don't understand why this is meant to be appealing. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense for us in this city. Everything you consider a product has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, all the things we need in our daily life. One by one, all these things became free, and so it ended up making sense for us to own... Um, well, it doesn't even make sense. It ended up to, not making sense for us yeah. to own much. Okay, I just misread it. Yeah. That's why it didn't make sense. Your stomach cramps are affecting your vision mm. now. I, I, I did actually have way too much coffee before this, and... <laughs> I can actually feel my fingers he's going, tingling. He's going blind. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeine, not even once. <laughs> right, so um, it goes on to say, in our city, we don't pay any rent because someone else is using our free space whenever we do not need it. My living room is used for business meetings when I am not there. Do you want business meetings in your own living room? When you're not there. 
This is this is your brain on communism. This is and, uh, this is insane. <laughs> what do these people not understand that there's a certain sense of belonging that people want in in their own private property and sense of self? They sort of like attach meaning to the idea of home, and home is somewhere that not any random so and so can just enter at will. Even communists acknowledge that there's there's some distinction between like. Sure, you don't have proper private property, but you know you you have property that oh, is only used by property. yeah. You yeah. have property used by you, but this even goes is this luxury, further than that. Fully automated luxury communism that I've heard mm. so much about. This makes Stalin look like a, a centrist. <laughs> this is absurd. Once in a while, I will choose to cook for myself. It is easy. The necessary kitchen equipment is delivered at my door within minutes. Do you not do you not have it well, already? Since transport became free, we stopped having all those things stuffed into our homes. Why keep a pasta maker and a crepe cooker crammed in our cupboards? We can just order them when we need them. My... How's that going to work? You're just going to return some dirty <laughs> uh, cooking well, that's, appliances. That's always the question that you ask with these sorts of things. Where it's like, everything will be free, you will get everything for free. Which is, well, who's going to supply them? Who's going to actually perform the labour well, behind it's, it? Well, it's a communist utopia, what they're describing, isn't it? It's openly communist. So the from commie the world fairies end. will drop from mm -hmm. the sky and do everything for you. Okay. Klaus Schwab will be the only one that owns property and we'll all be slaves of to course. him, basically. And he'll yes. be about 200 years old. And... He will be a gigantic fiery eye on the top <laughs> of a tower looking down on all of us. It, it, it gets worse, though. Okay. Shopping. I can't remember what that is. For most of us, it has been turned into choosing things to use. Sometimes I find this fun and sometimes I just want the algorithm to do it for me. What? You're going to have your... your your life dictated to you by an algorithm. We already have enough uh, scary algorithms out there right now. We Ugh. don't need any more. It, it knows my taste better than I do by now. Yeah, what I, on earth is going on? Just in the interest of time, I think we've kind of got the point okay. <laughs> of this article. We need to move on to the oh, next Oh, yeah, segment. I, I didn't realise the time. <laughs> yeah, we need to move on to the next segment, but... <laughs> All in all, yeah, that's pretty terrifying. Mm -hmm. Don't let the world... Uh, that's your brain on World Economic Forum. Not even once. Yeah, so if you read the rest of the article, it's it's like the ultimate dystopia. This is what we are fighting against. They want to end uh, private property, all that sort of stuff. And this is what mainstream journalism is pushing openly now, unironically, without a pinch of irony. Thanks for watching this clip from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters. We broadcast live on lotuseaters.com at 1pm UK time every weekday. And we also have loads more content that we don't put on YouTube, such as the memes and video comments from our community. Every week we also have new episodes of our regular series, Contemplations and Epochs. In Contemplations, Josh explores interesting and diverse topics, such as the science behind the need for fathers in the home, or why people believe in ghosts and the paranormal. In epochs, Bo and I go on, often at length, about various events and periods in history that are particularly fascinating. We've just finished a five-part mini-series on the Hundred Years' War, which I particularly enjoyed right up until the end of it when, spoiler alert, the French won. Alongside our excellent team of in-house writers, we also commission articles from outside contributors, and silver and gold tier subscribers have access to an audio recording of each premium article, so you don't have to read it yourself. We interview various contemporary thinkers and entertainers, as well as host the recordings of our live events. We also have a series of premium video content on the site, which we think is particularly worthwhile, or we simply can't put on YouTube because their editorial policies prohibit reasonable discussion on the subject. Personally, I think the deep dives we've been doing into critical theory and critical race theory are most important, as we reveal the origins of intersectionality and the plan that the radical left has for our societies. We are funded almost exclusively by our subscribers, so if you'd like to join us in the work we're doing, head over to lotusseaters.com and we'll see you there.